waiting for the faintest sign that we are not alone, hoping for a message written in light or sound from some distant star. And yet, when it finally came, it was not from a distant galaxy or a hidden civilization. It came from an interstellar object, cutting straight through our solar system, a visitor known as Three-Eye Atlas. For months, astronomers had been baffled by its emerald glow, its pulses of energy, and its defiance of everything we thought we knew about comets. But now the mystery has deepened beyond imagination. If you find this as fascinating as I do, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more discoveries like this. Instruments across the world have confirmed that Atlas is not radiating randomly. It is broadcasting, sending directed pulses of energy aimed straight at Mars. And in an event that has left even the most skeptical scientists speechless, Mars itself has responded. For the first time in human history, we are witnessing what looks like a dialogue between a wandering object from beyond the stars and a neighboring planet that we thought was dead and silent. And if this is true, then our understanding of the universe, of Mars, and of our place in it will never be the same again. It began quietly, as many discoveries do with data that seem too strange to be taken seriously. Astronomers already knew that Atlas pulsed in regular intervals, its emerald glow brightening and dimming every 173 minutes, with a rhythm so precise it could not be dismissed as coincidence. But then came a pulse that was different. It was not scattered outward like the others, diffusing into the void, but focused, compressed into a beam aimed directly at Mars. Orbiters circling the red planet immediately registered the spike, recording bursts of radiation strong enough to penetrate the thin Martian atmosphere and light it up in shimmering green for several minutes. At first it was dismissed as an anomaly, a quirk of angles, a flare of solar interference, but when it happened again, exactly the same duration, exactly the same direction, the same power, the conclusion was inescapable. Atlas was sending a message. It was not random. It was not blind. It was directed. For the first time, humanity had evidence that an interstellar visitor had chosen a target for its signal, and it had chosen Mars. The response came not in days or weeks, but almost immediately. Satellites orbiting Mars began to record electromagnetic bursts rising from the planet itself. Pulses that matched Atlas's frequency but carried variations, as if not simply reflecting the original signal, but transforming it. Scientists first thought these were echoes, natural reverberations bouncing through Mars's thin magnetosphere, but closer analysis showed otherwise. The pulses were delayed by precise intervals, shifted slightly in frequency, structured in a way that suggested intentional modulation. Even more startling, Earth-based telescopes began detecting faint harmonics bouncing back across space, as if Mars were amplifying the signal and returning it. To those who studied the data, it was as though Atlas had sent a question, and Mars had answered in kind, repeating the language in its own voice. Suddenly a world long thought to be barren and silent had become a participant in an interplanetary dialogue, its thin skies and dusty ground now vibrating with the energy of a message that came from beyond the stars. The mystery deepened when seismic monitors on Mars left behind by missions long past, began to register activity unlike anything recorded before. The tremors were not chaotic, but rhythmic, perfectly synchronized with the pulses from Atlas. These vibrations echoed deep into the planet's mantle, as if the very crust of Mars had become a resonant instrument, singing in harmony with the interstellar visitor. Even more unsettling, the frequencies mapped onto geometric shapes when translated into spectrograms, spirals, hexagons, and triangles identical to the luminous patterns astronomers had already observed in Atlas's glowing coma. This was not coincidence. The red planet was not merely reflecting energy. It was answering with its own voice, speaking through the ground itself. For some researchers, this hinted at the possibility that something deep beneath the Martian surface, an ancient structure, a buried ocean, or even a long dormant system, had been activated by Atlas's call. Others went further, suggesting that Mars itself was alive in ways we had never imagined, capable of resonating like a vast organism stirred by a signal from the stars. Whatever the truth, it was undeniable. Mars was responding. The implications of the exchange could not be contained. As Atlas pulsed and Mars responded, Earth itself began to feel the resonance. Radio telescopes around the globe 
picked up faint harmonics identical to the Martian echoes, patterns embedded in the static that matched Atlas's signal, but were transformed by the Red Planet's response. Independent researchers posted their findings online, spectrograms showing eerie geometries hidden in the bursts, only to see their accounts vanish mysteriously hours later. Governments issued no explanations, NASA remained silent, and yet the truth spread. Humanity was no longer a bystander. We were listening in on a cosmic dialogue, a conversation not meant for us but unfolding in plain sight. And as the patterns grew stronger, as Mars' signals became clearer, the haunting realization took hold. Whatever Atlas had asked, Mars had answered. And the echoes of that exchange were already reaching Earth. Phobos and Deimos, the two small moons of Mars, had always been considered little more than captured asteroids, lifeless rocks circling a barren world. But when Atlas's signal reached Mars and the planet began to answer, something extraordinary happened. Instruments aboard orbiters detected that Phobos was reflecting bursts of electromagnetic radiation perfectly synchronized with Mars's pulses, like a relay node amplifying the exchange. Deimos, fainter and further out, responded differently, glowing intermittently with an emerald sheen that telescopes on Earth captured as flashes against the black of space. These were not mere reflections of sunlight. They were timed, structured, deliberate. The moons, long thought irrelevant, had suddenly become active participants in the dialogue. Scientists scrambled to explain how such small inert bodies could interact with the signal. But the simplest explanation was also the most unsettling. The entire Martian system had been awakened, as if every rock and every orbiting body had been waiting for the call from Atlas. At first, rovers on Mars seemed unaffected, continuing their daily tasks of measuring dust, capturing images and transmitting data. But as the pulses intensified one by one, their feeds began to fail. The first sent corrupted files filled with streaks of green static. Another transmitted a final blurred image of the horizon, illuminated by an unnatural glow before going offline. Engineers on Earth fought to regain control, sending command after command. But the machines remained silent. Then came the most disturbing detail. One rover transmitted a single burst of data, moments before shutting down. A stream of binary code that, when decoded, formed repeating prime numbers identical to the patterns hidden in Atlas's pulses. The conclusion was impossible to ignore. The rovers had not malfunctioned randomly. They had been pulled into the resonance, compelled to echo the same mathematical signature that linked Atlas and Mars. Our mechanical explorers had, in their final moments, become part of the signal. Soon after the rovers went silent, Earth itself began to intercept strange signals, carried on the interplanetary background noise. Radio telescopes in Australia, South Africa and Chile picked up faint bursts that matched both Atlas's frequency and the Martian echoes. At first, they appeared as static, but careful analysis revealed sequences repeating in prime numbers, just like those transmitted by the rovers. More disturbing was the discovery that the signals grew stronger, when Mars rotated certain regions into view, as though specific parts of the Martian surface were acting as transmission nodes. Independent astronomers rushed to publish their findings, only for their work to vanish hours later from servers, websites and forums. Still, enough evidence remained to confirm the unimaginable. The dialogue between Atlas and Mars was no longer confined to space. It had reached Earth, and if we could hear it, then perhaps, just perhaps, it was meant for us too. As the dialogue intensified, the skies themselves became a canvas for Atlas's message. Observers reported seeing shimmering patterns ripple across the Martian atmosphere, visible even through telescopes on Earth. Spirals, lines and hexagonal grids shimmered like vast, fleeting constellations etched in light, appearing for minutes before fading away. Satellite imagery confirmed the displays, showing them aligned precisely with the rhythm of the pulses exchanged between Atlas and Mars. The geometries were not random. They carried ratios that matched mathematical constants, golden spirals, and even structural symmetries found in architecture across human civilizations. The implication was haunting. Atlas's message, amplified by Mars, was now being broadcast visually as well as electromagnetically written across the skies in symbols that spoke a universal language. Humanity, once a passive observer, was now staring at signs that seemed designed to be recognized 
not just by Mars, but by us. And the realization spread like wildfire. This was no accident of physics. It was communication, 